Welcome to the Inspiration North podcast, inspiring stories from inspirational people and how they found their passion, their true north. I'm James Eaves. And I'm Michelle Minikin. And this is the Inspiration North podcast. Today's episode, Creating Order from Chaos with Maria Watson. We talk about not really having any ideas about what she wanted to do when she was little, how to make a living doing something she's great at, and her hunt for the perfect Chinese takeaway. Maria Watson, the Details Director, helps creative-minded solar business owners find simple ways to bring calm, order and organisation to their life and business, so they can get more done with less stress. After 18 years in accountancy, working with hundreds of small businesses, she took her love of details, deadlines and talent for improving efficiency and created her own small business, which is in its seventh year. Originally from Lancashire, Maria now lives in Cornwall, working remotely with clients across the UK and the globe. But she remains a no-nonsense northerner who has an innate ability to bring calm and clarity to any business project and that's what her clients love. So Maria, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Shall we get started with the first question? When you were little, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? I didn't. No, I always find this a strange question as like I should have known. <laughs> and yeah, I always think like everybody did. But I remember when I was younger, if anybody asked me, I always said a nurse, which is like probably the the furthest <laughs> job ever away from me that yeah, it's I'm squeamish. And I'm like, out of all my friends, I would say I'm like the least, not caring, but if anybody's injured or any sick, they wouldn't come to me. (laughs) (laughs) But it was a socially acceptable answer and adults would leave you alone once you said that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it was. It was just, and I had a little nurse's costume, so I was like, oh, that'll do. (laughs) (laughs) So what have I got to dress up? So James would have been Spider-Man, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I would have probably used my dad's army clothes and been in the army. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, obviously, then it didn't play out. But was as you went through school and did you get any more ideas with what you'd like to do based on, I don't know, subjects or what was going on in life in general? Um, it's odd. It's, I, I kind of, it's just, I don't know, it's like something that wasn't really spoken about or mentioned. I just, yeah, I was, I'm from a very working class family and I think it was more about kind of getting by than, you know, thinking, I'm almost like dreaming bigger. Mm. I think what that did, it kind of planted the seed for me of what I didn't want. So, you know, I didn't want a job that I didn't want to be doing or that, you know, that, didn't pay enough or you know just I didn't want that feeling of struggle and yeah just like having to get up and go so it was like work was a chore type thing Mm. I think yeah although I didn't know what I wanted to do and actually I kind of didn't even know what jobs were out there I wasn't Mm. aware of like there's just so many jobs isn't there (laughs) so many yeah kind of things you can do I just wasn't aware of them but I I think it just I'd say around like school time it started planting the seeds of what I didn't want rather than making it kind of having a goal or a route I wanted to follow it's funny isn't it so um you generally go into work or you know have an idea of work that you can see so nurse we can see nurses, you know, teachers, you can see teachers, you know, people working in shops, you can see that. Um, and so understanding all the different types of jobs out there, and there's so many jobs now that we, you know, clearly weren't available when we were growing up. Exactly, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it is, it is a tricky one. So if education's role, surely that's the role of education is to prepare us for the world's work. That's the number one goal. Absolutely. And I think that if like if I knew now of I mean there's like so many jobs I still don't know about, but if 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 like in education or around that time people started like asking me what I was good at, what I enjoyed, and you know, delving into that type of thing rather than just the general let's get you better at English because you're not so good at that type of thing, or you you're good at maths, let's not focus there too much I think if people had just just looked into like I don't know I suppose like your natural strengths and things Mm. that would have kind of opened up a lot more opportunities or just given me a lot more ideas of of where to go um Mm. yeah and what was a what was out there for Mm. anybody with you know their individual brain no, it's funny. Do you, did you do that awful questionnaire? Is <laughs> it called something like Jig Cal? Or... I don't know. We did a questionnaire and it said I should be a speech speech therapist or a solicitor or a prison officer. So they're clearly related. See, mine always went back to accountancy and that's what I ended up in. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, like, I literally followed that. I was like, okay then. That, that tells me that. I'm Okay, I forgot. That's one of the few that it's, we've spoken to that's actually turned out to be, it's pan, panned out. You will. I think mine were, I think the number one was Merchant Navy Deck Officer. Oh, how exciting. And number two was um, a PT instructor in the army. I think I had that one as well. I think that, that isn't it, as well? Very strange. No, this is, yeah. So I'm glad to hear that for someone... It, it showed the way to something. <laughs> showed a way. Yes. That shows how little I knew as well. I was like, that's the only one for me. <laughs> you know, the world's be doing. He's, he's, he's down to this. So what yeah. was, the, was the plan then? Well, I... After school, I went to college and to study... It's just things are just so random. I don't even know, like... You just didn't get guidance, did you? I was like, right, I finished school, I got to college, and I started studying psychology. And it just frightened me. Everything that I learned, I was like, I've got, that's me. Oh my God, that's, you know, I was like, oh, suddenly I had all these psychological problems. <laughs> and if I didn't have them, I thought, well, I, like, I've started to develop that. <laughs> So I stopped doing that. I was like quite anxious at that age as well. So it just added to it. Um, and I just looked for something like the furthest away from that I could get. That's still not like what do you want to do or where do you want to be headed? It was just like, what's not psychology? Mm. And I did leisure and tourism um, at college. And one part of that was like business and finance. And that's where I excelled. So that's when I took my little careers test and it said, oh, I was I liked doing the balance sheets and stuff. So they're like, oh, accountancy. So I, yeah, I went, the careers advisor said, oh, there's this job coming up. I don't even think I knew what accountants were at the time. I remember starting my job and thinking like, what, what do they actually do here? <laughs> <laughs> Drink tea, play on computers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and that started like an 18 well, 20-year career in accountancy. Mm. Yeah. So, so what do accountants do, Maria? <laughs> they, in those days, they, like, rifle through bags of dirty invoices <laughs> or farms. <laughs> 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 For days and days and days. Not the luxury of everything being online and then, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, I pulled it all together, then spent a few more days searching for, like, when I was training, you know, things a pound, things are a pound out, or one pound 24, I find it. <laughs> so that would be... But I did enjoy it, though. It's it's kind of formed... My brain was doing what it's doing now. It was mm-hmm. taking something messy and making it all nice and organised and distilling it. So, yeah, and I think it helped build confidence... And it, I worked with hundreds of different business owners and got, went out to loads of different businesses. So it was, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it 
it was definitely beneficial. It's one of those, it's sort of uh, the compulsory area, isn't it, of business that you can't get away from, or you can for a while until someone catches up with you, the government, or mm. if you're not paid bills to, but it's um, such a valuable part of, of business, but something that we can't all do or have the desire to do. So it's such yeah. a valued partnership, isn't it? Mm, and I think as well, from that and going to what I do now, it's like when I when I worked in accountancy, I used to go out and teach business owners. But as, as things were getting more computerised, I'd teach them, like set them up. Um, and it's that part of kind of my passion and what I like to do is like hey, people see seeing people overwhelmed mm. and people do get really overwhelmed with numbers and finance you know if it's not your thing and it's and it doesn't have to be that way so I think that again it's almost like there are lots of almost like different breadcrumbs that if I follow would lead to where I am now but it's only looking back that you see that that you know the things that you were drawn to well, for me, that I were drawn to in employment, the things I enjoyed most, and that was one of them. Because definitely, is it, it's it is it's something you have to do, and I, I definitely think it's something that yeah you can outsource, but you've got to have have your head around it yourself. You know, you've got to know your numbers in your business. Yeah. Mm. Is that does it? I found with one or two friends that. And I found this at an international business at university and wasn't a fan of finance. I could never make anything balance. But I know from friends who were similar at university that they got out into the real world. When you're working with business owners and you sort of see what they're making, what they're selling, there becomes more, there's an, an attachment to the numbers, which makes it more interesting. It's It's got more meaning to it. I don't know if that's something you found as well. It, I probably say I was the opposite. Oh. I, but it wasn't, for me, it wasn't a, I think it got to the point. But I think because I worked kind of, I wasn't a chartered accountant presenting numbers to, um, with, to the business owners. I was pulling the numbers together, mm-hmm. like, you know, from scratch and getting things right, making sure that, no errors were made and stuff. So I think for me, I was I was very detached from the numbers. It was more about things being correct. Mm-hmm. So because people used to say they'd like drop the books, oh, I haven't had a very good year. And I'm like, you know, it's it doesn't, people are often kind of think they're being judged, mm-hmm. you know, with, um, with this stuff. And it, it's, yeah, it's far from it really. I think it's different, obviously, when it goes to, the accountant who's then going to go and speak to them and advise them. But from my sense, it was, um, it was, yeah, it was just getting things right. But now I do still help a few people with this stuff. Now it's different. I am looking at it from a business owner's point of view. Mm-hmm. So I can totally, yeah, I can totally relate to what your friend was, was meaning. It's, I think it's different when you're in different shoes. Mm. So I think what I'm hearing is you like literally a big mess and just getting your teeth into it and just coming up with a like streamlined processes, teach people, stop that overwhelm. So what point clearly in your job did you think, hmm, I could probably do this for a living? I didn't. <laughs> I, okay. I did a little detour. Mm. I worked, so I worked in accountancy and then I moved from Preston where I worked for a firm for eight years, loved it. I moved down to Cornwall um, and got married and started working in another firm of accountants. I think something had always, I'd always wanted to work for myself. I've always been self-employed as well as employed. Mm. So I always had like side projects going on. But at, when I moved to Cornwall, it was a mixture of where I was living. I wanted more freedom. It, it, it just a, it's a completely different way of life. Mm. 
and because like where I lived before city life was you know it was about city life and and working is part of that working in a city Mm. whereas here completely different it's beaches laid back and all that so I I did like the seed had been planted and my husband then started working away as well he works at sea so he got a job working away three weeks away three weeks at home so that kind of nudged me into so if I'd have stayed employed I just wouldn't see wouldn't see him which I did for that that the first year mm-hmm. um but even then I didn't know what I could do I, I didn't want to do bookkeeping or accountancy for people I, I did do it for a little while just to keep me ticking over but I just thought I'd start again and the the again there wasn't that much out there then for people like self-employment and all this online business was just starting really um or I just started hearing of it so I just thought I'd have to start again and learn something so I did another random training to be a health coach another completely like when I look now I'm like I've made the worst health coach (laughs) (laughs) you've got to like it's all about compassion and people um you know food which I'm rubbish at I hate cooking (laughs) it's like I don't know I've just made life half hard for myself so um but I did get pick up a lot of like the coaching side of it I think um and it wasn't until I stumbled across two people online that spoke about kind of making a living doing just what you're naturally good at. Mm. And that's where that's when things kind of shifted for me. And I started thinking, all right, I don't need to be qualified in something. It's like, what am I already doing? And that I just started delving into things and that's when I looked back over like my employment and part-time jobs just looked for those things I was naturally doing and that yeah that all pointed to helping people get out of overwhelm and to turning these messes into nice organized easy simple so that people feel calm and yeah I mean it took it took a while (laughs) to get to that but that's what triggered it and it, yeah and I just love that there's more of that about now I wish there was more of it in schools and you know I, I don't really know what it's like at the moment mm. not having children in education but I wish there was more of that where it's just looking at people's natural strengths mm. and just you know urging them to follow that and get better at that stuff Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of an analogy as to what you do about bringing order to chaos. It's It feels a bit like a, a big bowl of cooked spaghetti. It's just a hot mess. You can't really pick pick out anything. and then, But you then convert it into like a packet of uncooked spaghetti where everything is has its place. It's very neat and structured and ordered. And, mm. <laughs> and we're talking from a place of experience as well, aren't we? Uh, yes. We <laughs> so for our listeners, Maria has been, we've been working with Maria, otherwise known as the details director. How long now? A couple of months? Yeah, will be. Um, to help us just streamline and process and keep us on track and stop us running around like headless chickens feeling like that the sky is falling in because there's too many things to do so yes it's been it's we feel much more in control Mm. of of stuff and then you know james says what we're doing today sam trello (laughs) (laughs) do love trello Yes, it's it's funny because I've been like I I absolutely love order and routine, but I also totally rebel against it. Mm. It's one of my weird personality character slash you know flaws that <laughs> it's like I need it, but I hate it. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think a lot of people are like that, and I like to think 
kind of like my difference is that I, I'm, I never tell people what to do. I'm just, I create your way. I like to kind of think, I'll always ask people, like, how do you imagine it? What, you know, what you see and how, what would feel good and, and then recreate that because I just think it's so important. It's almost like I can, I want to get a visual from somebody of what they expect and what they want to see and then create that mm-hmm. from the mess. <laughs> And that, yeah, that gives me a lot of satisfaction. And just seeing that, like, brilliant business owners and brands like you two, just being able to do what you do best because you've not got all that clutter and stress and, yeah, things that you don't really need to be doing and that are draining energy and time. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's nice to, to feel that I can help with that. Yeah useful do you still get the same as with accounting clients where there's a a level of maybe not embarrassment but it's almost saying you know I am I do all right but it's like chaos no structure but you know I've managed to get by every time it's like they'll be like a mess and it's like oh but I know where things are I was actually on a call with someone and it's like everything was everywhere, but I know where things are. We were taking ages and I'm like, you don't, do you? <laughs> no, I can't find anything. But it's but people do, I know I do understand that people work, people work like that and they have been and they've been getting by and they probably do really well. It's you know, it's just tweaking it to make things easier and make that better for them. But yeah, I do always get that. The, Kind of, it's almost like that tidying up before the cleaners come. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm having a call. They're suddenly like, "Oh, let's delete a few files and get things tidied up a little bit." No, it's I think that's a good thing. It's almost like booking the call with me triggers something. Yeah, that accountability. Mm. Yeah. So you've got the productivity club as well. Yes. Yeah, I have. Um, I help people like one to one like personal productivity I like to call that um and then I do something else called the productivity review which we started with just reviewing everything in the business so for people who were kind of in a mess in a bit of a pickle with things so that we can look at yeah that's working really well and that needs some work and I have the productivity club as well which is my group um, program where we do we have accountability planning sessions and um, I think the favorite thing is the co-working sessions so that is like yeah let's get on zoom and get stuff done they work really well and they work well for me actually I'm like if you're putting anything off I'm always like right do it in co-working so mm-hmm. it's a really good like head down blitz through things while people are watching you <laughs> <laughs> it's like pressure right it's like the, it's always like that pressure that you've got before going on holiday isn't it it's like I can't I can't go on holiday until I've done x y and Z. it's like the most productive day of the year oh, absolutely isn't it so you clean your house finish three projects <laughs> I actually wrote about that saying like works like you're going on holiday <laughs> <laughs> it's not sustainable though because like, the amount of stress that you give yourself it's like day seven of holiday and then you, you literally start calming down <laughs> you have to come back yeah uh, you can't kid yourself either can you you know you know when you're you're not heading towards that beach or whatever it is that you look forward to mm. and that's I think there's a lot with when you have your own business it's in many, for many people that we know and, and ourselves included, it's you're no longer in an office environment. You maybe there's no manager who's dictating what should be done and when. And then there's a lot more that's going on. There's more moving parts. And I've personally found that there's so much to remember if it isn't down somewhere. And I'm not talking about a notepad as well as the notes in my phone, as well as a Word document on my laptop. I'm, I'm yeah. going to get everything done in the right way. And then it becomes like so overwhelming. I can't actually decide what to do next. Mm, it is. It, it's, it's, it's kind of debilitating. It. You're just kind of frozen, aren't you, in, in your work. Um, but, 
Yeah, it's I I find that what that the first thing I do with people is clear the heads. It's like a, just get everything out of your head. And and exactly like you're saying, when you're working with somebody, you you've got you've got deadlines that are kind of set in stone. You've got people working around you. So there's almost like that it's not necessarily competitiveness, but you know, you want to keep on top of things. Mm-hmm. And like you say, people telling telling you what to do, and you just can't. You can constantly ask questions, can't you? And it's it is a completely different way of working when and th- the things that other people did as well that you didn't even have to think about. Suddenly, you're like, all oh, right, I have to do that as well. <laughs> but yeah, the computer's broken. Uh, there's no IT to ring, so yeah. I'm gonna have to sort this out. Well, printers normally printer breaks, isn't it? You just look at the printer and just goes, Nyeh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and especially when you're rushing. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah. But yeah, it's it's completely overwhelming, I think. And it, like I, I'm not a business coach or anything, so I never tell people what to do, but I like taking what they are going to tell themselves to do. And it's almost like feeding it back, mm-hmm. just like as and when you need it, rather than you trying to kind of, wade through it all at once. Mm. I think as well when you leave employment, there are already lots of processes in place. So when you create something from scratch, it's it's almost, oh, I've never really thought about that or how do I do this? So you do one or two ways, don't you? You either sort of make things up from scratch or just carry on doing what you did when you were working for somebody else. Um, and bring those corporate processes mm. into place like oh I must have my lunch between half past 12 and half past one and then get back to the mm-hmm. desk and because like clearly somebody my manager's watching me and it's like your manager's not there oh, your gosh. Gosh. and and struggling so so many people we know are starting to take like do four day weeks that four day working week and it's like almost, who do I ask for permission for flexible working? It's like, nobody, you do you. <laughs> it's your business. Absolutely. And I think there's like a period of unwinding from all that because I started doing that. Oh, I've got to be at my desk at nine o'clock. I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I, yeah, I, I do focus on that when I'm a lot when I'm working with people, like working with somebody's energy. Um, we're all kind of, um, we all work better at different times of the day and, and depending what day it is and how you're feeling and what your energy is like, all that stuff and all that comes into like working more productively. Absolutely. And taking time off as well, like knowing that I can't, I work with like four pillars of productivity and one of those is like healthy habits and the people, you just kind of, when you go into employment, you know, you're only there from certain times, aren't you? And everything else is kind of taken care of for you. You get your weekends off, your evenings or whatever it is, whereas you've got to make yourself stop. You've got to make yourself switch off and slow down and take breaks and stuff. So it's, it is a completely different ball game. And it's, I've worked with, like, I've seen a lot of people burn out through it and like you were saying like process wise I've seen people with nothing and I, and I think making it up making it up's fine as long as you record it and make sure that you keep improving it and stuff mm-hmm. um but and I've seen it as well where they've taken corporate processes and just like there's this whole song and dance to do something when actually you could have just gone step one step two and it's done it's mm-hmm. it's really it's difficult cool so what's the what are the plans for world domination, Maria? Well, world domination. Um, my plans for world domination are quietly behind the scenes, <laughs> <laughs> hiding as much as I can. Um, just, I think, if I can just help, like just one person at a time, feel that relief and kind of calm that will make their business and themselves just shine so much brighter, then I'm happy with that. That's where I get I get absolute satisfaction from that. Mm. Every everywhere I've got like my mission in anything, it's always like calm. I'm just like, All right, I just want to bring calm. Tagline, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> bring calm to business owners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need it. 
Mm, absolutely. Because we're so passionate, and, uh, yeah, including you in this, we're so passionate about what we do that, you know, those healthy habits. I always say it's like when we're really on top of the business, the house falls apart. When we're really on top of the house, the business falls apart. It's like, where's the balance? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. It is, and it's finding that. And I don't think you ever kind of find the absolute balance, but it's. I think it's just knowing where to look mm. and knowing what to keep an eye on so that you can quickly hone in on I always say that with my four pillars, I'm like, if one's wobbling, you just need to know where to look just to help it kind of stand up straight. And but like you say, once one wobbles, another one will. But it's just, yeah, as long as it's nothing's falling down and taking you with it, it's, it is that kind of balancing act. Yeah. Before, I think before we started working with you, I used to say that uh, we don't sort of, juggle we don't say we don't spin plates we juggle spinning plates because it was just yeah. so much and it just feels it just yeah feels much calmer yeah easier so thank you oh you're welcome I can feel it when we speak <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah, so much so much easier so are you ready to move on to the quick fire round yes let's go for it so question number one, if you could live in a book, a TV show or a movie, which would that be? Definitely have to be a book, I think. I love books. Um, I think it would be, did you, did you ever read Eni Blyton? Yep. Younger, The Famous Five. Mm-hmm. I think it would have to be In Their World. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It was funnily, I was thinking of the magic faraway tree. So it's another yes. Enid Blyton one as well. Moon face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. All the different worlds that you can go yeah. into. The, the sweetie world is clearly my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat everything. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Okay, so which household task would you love to eliminate? Just the general cleaning. Yeah, um, my house is as, I'm very organised in my house as well, as you can imagine. So, yeah, I think if somebody could just do the cleaning, I'm fine with everything else. But, you know, yeah, the itty-bitty cleaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And then the final question, so what is your favourite meal? Can it be like a takeaway meal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm very specific, <laughs> my favourite <laughs> meal is, it's Chinese and it's special curry and it's from a takeaway in Longridge in Lancashire. So I've, I've tried to find it down here and I've done a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to exercise that research away. Um, but yeah, that was I remember when I was younger, that was like my absolute favourite treat. And I've never found one quite as good. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Okay, okay. So if we could get in um get in a time machine and take you back to 18-year-old you, so you could have a have a wee chat with her. What what advice would you give? Um, 18, so I'll have done college by then, so I can't advise myself not to do psychology. <laughs> <laughs> I've already traumatised myself with that. Um, I think I would say to myself, um, firstly, that you're not fat. <laughs> so do not go on those, down that kind of whole not feeling good about yourself thing mm. which I did and many women do and men I think I just kind of tell myself to, to trust myself and yeah not worry about what people think so much mm. which I think it's probably taken me until now like in my 40s to to know that I mean, I don't know whether that is just something you learn with time, but I, I wish I'd have been more confident 
at that age. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, just less worried about what other people were thinking and trusting myself and my my own mind. We didn't, I didn't get this. <laughs> website, is it there? It's the best place <clears throat> to find you on the internet, your website. Yeah. Um, yes, my website, which is www.thedetailsdirector.com. And I am very active on LinkedIn as well. I share lots of tips and tricks on there. Um, yeah, that's Maria Watson. That's good. That saved me a job. There, yeah. Is, <laughs> I wasn't organised enough to get that before. No, how, how <laughs> ironic. <laughs> Isn't it? The one time we forget, it's, yeah, no comment. <laughs> but otherwise, we've, we've really... Yeah, we've got a checklist on us. We've got it for everything else, but I haven't, I haven't got one for your podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> we normally remember. We normally pretty good. That's no, I don't. So, yes, need a checklist. Thanks, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> on Trello. <laughs> Work in progress, that one. But otherwise, thank you for joining us. It's been great to chat and hear more about your journey. Yes, thank you for having me. Thanks everyone for listening. Check out all the show notes at inspirationnorth.com. Join us again for the next episode when we'll be chatting to another inspirational person. If you like this, subscribe and tell your friends. If you didn't like this, subscribe anyway and tell everybody. (laughs) 